Awakening Your Everyday Wisdom, video number three, Consciousness. Everything exists based on awareness of it. In other words, if we're not aware of it, it doesn't exist for us. It becomes a part of our known reality once we become aware of it. The key characteristic of consciousness is awareness. As a creative being, you can place your consciousness and your awareness wherever you want to. That's how we shape our reality. But how do we know what to include in our awareness and what to exclude? That's the key. That's where your everyday wisdom comes into play. I'll introduce myself a little. I'm a light worker. That's somebody who has a meditation practice of sending love and light to the world. I'm also a seeker. That means I don't subscribe to any particular religion, but I do look for divine truth in many places. So I don't have a creed or a dharma, but I'm very open-minded. So what I'm going to talk about today, we'll start with some definitions of consciousness, get a little objective reality if we can, and then we'll talk about various levels of consciousness. So let's start with the Cambridge Dictionary, definitions of consciousness. The state of being awake, aware of what's going on around you, and the ability to think. Noticing the existence of something, the state of understanding and realizing something. So let's take another look. This is from dictionary.com on the internet. Awareness of one's own existence, sensations, thoughts, surroundings, etc. The full activity of the mind and the senses. Awareness of something for what it is. Internal knowledge. And that's where we're going with inner wisdom. Concern, interest, or acute awareness. And a mental process of which a person is aware versus an unconscious process. So those are some definitions. So let's look at the levels of consciousness. We're all pretty familiar with the levels of consciousness that Sigmund Freud identified years ago, many years ago. The unconscious, which a lot of us now refer to as the subconscious mind, the conscious mind, and the superconscious mind. So when I was examining all these different aspects of consciousness, I thought it would be a really good way, a personal way of getting in touch with these aspects of my mind. So I gave them names and personas. And I was debating whether I would share those with you or not. My fear of judgment and ridicule popped up and I'm like, no, they'll think I'm weird if I tell them this. But I decided to go ahead and tell you about my subconscious mind. Her name is Precious. She's about 25 years old and she has long blonde hair. She looks kind of like Alice in Wonderland from some of the pictures we've seen. And every now and then she wears a blue dress, just like some of the pictures. She's a much more mature version of Alice. So the reason I identified this persona is to give me a closer connection. And it's really paid off and it's quite amazing actually. I find myself saying, thank you, Precious, quite often. She helps me find things that are missing. She helps me stay on track and brings up information or memories that I need to recall that are pretty deep probably. And she's also like a navigating system, kind of like a, a personal GPS that helps you through experiences and situations. Because she has recall and memory of everything that has happened in this life, every word that's been spoken. It's pretty amazing how fast the subconscious mind is. Let me give you a little example. Bruce Lipton, he's a, a cellular biologist and has done a lot of work on different realms. And he's got a book on the biology of belief. So he talks about consciousness quite a bit. And he says that the conscious mind can process about 40 bytes of information per second. Whereas the subconscious mind can process 20 million bytes of information per second. That's a big difference. So I like being connected to my subconscious mind. Let's take another look at a way to understand levels of consciousness. Dr. Makia Kaku, 
If you don't know him, he's a delightful physicist. And he describes our levels like this. Level one is being aware of yourself in space. So in physical reality would be another way of saying that. Level two would be understanding your relationship to other organisms and the world around you. And mostly that information is through emotions and social awareness. And then level three is understanding your relationship to time and having the ability to imagine the future. So Dr. Kaku says that humans are the only creatures that we know of that operate at all three levels of consciousness. He says humans are the only creatures that can plan the future. Possibly so. Let's take a look at altered states of consciousness. So these are various states where the mind is not in its usual waking alert state. And so it'd be more like maybe hypnosis or meditation, deep prayer, dreams, even hallucinations. These would be all in the category of altered states of consciousness. Being influenced by alcohol and drugs, whether legal or prescription, doesn't matter, they still can alter consciousness. So I've met people who are afraid of meditating because they're afraid that they would be taken over by a dark spirit or a dark energy. And I respect that. Personally, I'm more afraid of people who are drunk you know, or high. They really seem quite weird to me and seem to be operating under an altered state of consciousness. But I think it's a good idea to call in some form of protection whenever you enter into an altered state of consciousness. A little prayer, I always circle myself with white light, anything that helps you feel protected. So let's take a look at a scenario. I'm gonna offer this as food for thought. So imagine human life on planet Earth and it's bright during the day and at night it turns dark, but there are no stars no planets, nothing in the sky, just total darkness. Now, would we ever sit there and wonder, hmm, I wonder if there's life out there, like we do today. I wonder if we're all alone in the universe. We would probably never question it because our physical reality would look like there's nothing else there. And if we tried to get the funding for a exploration to go out there and see if there's something, it would probably be hard to get the funding for that. So we would be comfortable in our acceptance of the fact that there's nothing there. Now, what if we had this kind of internal nudging saying, there's got to be more than just this. Now, maybe that would drive us to try to explore. Maybe not. The point of this scenario is that unless we have some reason to explore beyond our physical information, we're not going to do it. But if we get some sense, like what if we heard a sound throughout the open space, the dark night, we might say, oh, that had to come from somewhere. Let's find out. So what I'm saying to you is don't be fooled by saying, oh, I'm not aware of it, so it doesn't exist, if you're getting these internal nudges from your inner wisdom. Your everyday wisdom might be telling you to look beyond the physical constraints of your life. That's all I'm suggesting. If you like this video and found it useful, please click the like button. And if you would like to be involved in future videos that I'm producing, please click the subscribe button. And if you have friends or family that you think might benefit from the video, I'd love it if you'd share it. Thank you. If you'd like to access the self-assessments and handout on my website, please visit www.still-waters.net and go to the resources tab and there you will find the self-assessments and the handouts and also the references for the various videos. I'd love your feedback. I have a blog on my website. I'd love to hear what you think, what your experiences are. And even if you have contrary ideas to what I've presented, I'm open. 
I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. We're all in this together and I'm a fellow traveler. Peace.